Well, indeed, interesting times for the technology space across Africa. And Kenya is set to benefit from an additional 105 megawatts of geothermal power before March next year, as the government moves to reduce the use of thermal power. The move comes days after President Uhuru Kenyatta announced that the government would reduce industrial power tariffs by 50% from January as one way of supporting investors. Works in the Menengai geothermal field are underway with the first phase of the new power plant in the area in the last stages. Well, like I told you, today we'll be talking matters energy, and I'll be speaking to the CEO of Kenya Electricity Transmission Company, that is Ketraco, FCP Fernandez Barraza. And just to recap our Twitter poll question, today we're asking you, do you think increased access to power will impact economic performance for Kenya? You can tweet us using our Twitter handle at KT News, or you can tweet me using at Agina Abi. Remember to use the hashtag KTN Business. And let's now dive in into that all-important conversation on power distribution in the country. Many thanks, Mr. Barraza, for joining us. Thank you very much. And uh, picking off from what we saw in Kajiado, Kenchik, they're doing an amazing job when it comes to ensuring that people get supplies to the market. On the flip side, they need electricity to do all this. From where you sit, how would you rate Kenya when it comes to power supply? Uh, thank you very much in terms of um, uh, the question on power. Uh, definitely for you to achieve economic uh, development, you need power that is stable. Now when you look at what is happening in Gajeda, I'm very happy to report that we have um, energized a very a significant transmission line, that is Mombasa, Nairobi, which traverses all the way from Mbakasi up to Rabai. Yes. <coughs> and what is happening is um, by energizing that line, we have made sure that power is stable. All right. And when we have stable power, definitely we are going to encourage uh, both uh, industrial manufacturers and SMEs, like the Gajedo story is a very good story on SMEs mm -hmm. because of the stability of power, even the poultry farming All and right. other SMEs can thrive mm -hmm. because of stability. All right. So you can clearly see how power has a positive impact on economic development, right from SMEs up to the industrial revolution. All right. Yeah. And uh, still related to this, uh, Fernandez, of course, uh, when we have power access across the country, it improves the livelihoods of the people, it creates economic opportunities. But from where Kenya stands right now, we have an installed capacity of about 2,300 megawatts mm -hmm. against a demand of about 5,000 megawatts. And what has been Ketrako's role in terms of trying to see Kenya achieve this dream? Uh, just maybe to correct you in terms of numbers. Yes, we have 2,300 megawatts of mm -hmm. installed capacity, but the demand is slightly lower, it's like 1,700. All right. Now what is happening is uh, we have a situation of suppressed demand where we don't have the necessary infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, to evacuate power uh, to those respective areas. A very good example is we have a lot of power in geothermal uh, or carrier, yes. around 800 megawatts. Now this power is not um, reaching western region because you don't have the necessary infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now what Ketrak is doing is to invest in transmission lines. Uh, for example, uh, in western region, we have around five transmission lines where now we are uh, planning to evacuate power, let's say from Olkaria, uh, through our Olkara Lesos Kisumu line, 400 kV. Mm -hmm. We also have lines like uh, Olkara Naroko, 60 kilometers. We have lines we have um, definitely done in the northern part of the country. 
again to facilitate rural access. Yes. Uh, for example, Kindaroma Mwingi Garissa mm -hmm. is a very good story mm -hmm. of lines which have transformed the livelihood of people in the northern region. By just energizing um, Garissa substation two years ago, Yes. Uh, I think the situation there has changed. Um, barber shops can operate. Uh, guys can go into milk processing. There's a lot of uh, economic activity happening in Garissa yes. because we replaced uh, the thermal uh, generation mm -hmm. by green energy from Kindaruma. All right. So there's a very um, a positive impact. Another good example is um, Lamu County. When we energized our Abai Malindi Garissa and Lamsa 320 kilometer line, uh, you can clearly see a very improved economic activity in Lamu. Again, the first time that Lamu is being served by um, energy from the national grid. All right. So we can name a many transformational agenda items we have achieved by virtue of energizing uh, various transmission lines. For the record, we have almost completed 18 uh, transmission lines and substations. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the first time uh, in, the, in the last nine years, we have brought on board 1,840 kilometers of transmission lines. When you look at that uh, in perspective of what we had before Ketrako came on board, uh, that is for the last 50 years, yes. before 2009, we had 3,300 kilometers. So you can clearly see the impact of Ketrako for the last nine years vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis what we had uh, since independence. All right. And a uh, very interesting uh, track record there, uh, Fernandez. And looking at the quality of power, it's also another conversation because people want cheap and reliable power. So, absolutely. so how are we able to achieve both at the same time deliver competitive power? Uh, thank you. Now, with regard to uh, quality of power, that is now the conversation we're having with manufacturers because when power is not stable, it uh, definitely becomes expensive. Uh, for example, cement factories, when you're manufacturing high-end uh, products, you need power that is stable and quality such that we are no power outages. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of um, competitiveness, what we are doing, uh, number one, is to ensure that we go deeper into renewable energy. When you look at the power mix, we have around 20% of um, thermal, around 46% of geothermal, at uh, 3% of uh, hydro, but you know hydro has a lot of, um, is, is not very stable. Yes. Because it is uh, pegged on the weather patterns. Yes, it's erratic to weather. Uh, absolutely. So what we are doing now is um, using our counterparts in Kenjin uh, and also other IPPs. We are trying to encourage investment in geothermal, mm -hmm. uh, which is renewable energy. We are also going into coal, um, 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 uh, geo, uh, coal generation. Yes. And nuclear. Now what will happen is, um, when we have more of a geothermal and hydro, by the way, using our interconnector with um, Ethiopia, Kenya, we are going to import around 400 megawatts of power, hydro from Ethiopia. Now, the cost of hydro and geothermal is less than 10 US cents mm -hmm. compared to the cost of um, thermal energy, which goes up to 22 US cents. So basically, by having a progressive program of reducing reliance on thermal, definitely is going to address uh, the costs by reducing our uh, dependence on thermal and have more of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So having a combination of um, the high voltage lines, 400 kV, that will address the transmission losses. Mm -hmm. So I ideally, the costs of transmission losses will be reduced by almost 3%. By investing more in renewable energy, we are going also to address the issue of competitiveness yes. and having the quality and stability of power using the high voltage lines will definitely address both quality and competitiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, of course, I have a number of questions, Fernandez, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but uh, t talk to us about uh, the competitive element mm -hmm. where if you look at other economies such mm -hmm. as Ethiopia, mm -hmm. South Africa, um, Kenya stands uh, a distant when it comes to power supply mm -hmm. and of course uh, the cost of power. Mm -hmm. um, what, what needs to change in our approach as well as we move forward? Now, when you look at Ethiopia, for example, their main source of power is hydro. And 
of course, South Africa, they have a lot of coal, and also they do a lot of wind and solar. As well as nuclear. Absolute and nuclear. Yes. Now, what Kenya is doing at the moment, uh, we are on the right trajectory by investing a lot into renewable energy. As I said, uh, more of your thermal. We, of course, bring on board a wind. Um, around 300 megawatts will be coming on board by end of the year mm -hmm. using uh, the coal, uh, the Luangalani line, Susu line. Uh, we are also moving into coal. Uh, of course, there's already a transmission line that we have on board, Lamuki to Nairobi East. Nuclear is also coming on board in the next 10 years. So by addressing the larger energy mix, I believe uh, we are going to be competing with South Africa. Mm -hmm. But of course, in the region, I must say that the tariffs mm -hmm. that we're enjoying in Kenya are more competitive as compared with our counterparts in Uganda and Tanzania. Mm -hmm. But largely addressing the energy mix, investing more in renewable energy, and reducing consumption of thermal definitely will be more competitive. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, Fernandez, we want to go for a quick commercial break. Mm -hmm. When we come back, I'd like to hear your thoughts on how is Ketraco aligning itself to support the Big Four agenda? Because one of the big elements is manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And definitely, we look forward to getting some